The Miami Hurricanes will beat the Clemson Tigers on Saturday if you are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. We made it. I'm Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Miami Hurricanes will beat Clemson if they can execute our keys to the game. Very happy to talk about all of this and talk some recruiting with our good pal Larry Bluestein. Our boy Blue, South Florida High School Sports Show, 560 WQAM. Blue, how are you? Good, good, Alex. Uh, you know, middle of everything. Uh, high school, college pro, so... Yeah, it's a great time uh, to be a sports fan, especially a um, – and I like baseball. So, you know, obviously they you got everything going on. But, uh, yeah, this is a big week, big week for Miami, definitely. Huge week. And so, Blue, here's how I see it. If I'm going to narrow this down to three keys to the game, and you may have some extras you want to add in, and I'd love your comments. Key number one for me, which has become glaringly obvious based on the, the way the last two games have played out, Miami's got to cut down or cut out the self-inflicted wounds. You can't be losing the turnover margin for nothing. You can't be throwing five interceptions over two games and nine turnovers in the past two games. And you've got to cut down on the penalties as well. Miami was actually not the most penalized team on the field last week. That was North Carolina. But you definitely can't be the most penalized uh, team on the field this week. Uh, that's my key number one. Number two, Blue, I would like to see – more maybe check downs from Tyler Van Dyke, getting some tight ends involved in the passing game. We should see an expanded role for Elijah Arroyo this week because he's healthier than he was last week. Maybe throw to some of the running backs as well. That's number two. And then number three for me, Hurricanes have got to bounce back blue as a run-stopping team. Heading into last week against North Carolina, Miami was the top run-stopping team in the country, giving up only 58 ground yards per game. They got gashed by Amari and Hampton last week. And, Blue, I guess we can start here. They're going up against some really, really good running backs this week when you talk about Will Shipley and Phil Moffa. That's one of the better two-headed attacks in the country. Miami's got to be stingy again when it comes to stopping the run. Yeah, no doubt. Um, make some good points. Um, obviously, if you turn the ball over uh, like Miami did last week, especially in the second half, you're not going to win. No. I don't care who you're playing against. I mean, and and that's what their downfall was a year ago, that uh, just mm, poor execution. And and I think that's what uh, held them back. And, and I want to see more leadership from Tyler Van Dyke. I mean, you know, he's a senior or he's a, a guy that's been around for a while. Um, he's got to definitely be the centerpiece. He can't blend in. And he's the one that's making a lot of these mistakes. And then he's got to kind of pull back a little bit because a lot of those younger kids are looking at him, you know, saying, well, he's the guy that's been around a while. He's the quarterback. So I a hundred percent agree with you. He just, but especially against this team. And, you know, Miami's got to really put it together that this might be the best defensive front that they're going to face. They're all graduates. I mean, they're all 22, 23 years old. So um, they have a lot of experience. Their front sends, seven's always good, good linebacker play. So Miami's got to execute because if uh, they, they don't want to get down in a game uh, like they did last year, last week they got ahead at halftime and then all of a sudden started making mistakes and had to come from behind and that's no fun blue um how how much should miami fear clemson's passing game obviously they went up against one of the best receivers in the country last week and tez walker sure. he torched miami's defense left and right and uh, drake may is one of the better quarterbacks in the country uh, Cade Klubnick, the quarterback they face this weekend, uh, he, he's no Drake May. He has taken care of the football really well this year. Um, 
I am kind of wondering how much their top receiver from last year, who's missed the last three games with what looked like an ankle injury, Antonio Williams, right. looks like he's going to be back this week. So that gives another threat to the Clemson passing game. Some folks are worried about Miami's secondary. How do you think Miami matches up defensive back-wise against Clemson? Well, obviously it's going to have to be what's done up front. I mean, you know, I mean, they can't give them forever to throw. And like you said, if if um, if their running game gets going, it's going to be problematic for Miami. And then because then where do you do? You have a secondary that a lot of people are not believing in. And I mean, they're good, but they're not experienced. And you have a running game that's cutting right through your defensive front. Um, Yeah, it's. There's no, there's no question. Miami has to play well on both sides of the line of scrimmage. It's just their, their, their line. I mean, if if anything ever backed it up, that everything begins and and ends up front. This is a game because you have strengths in uh, in uh, Clemson up front. Uh, they have a big offensive line, uh, three returning starters. Uh, you know, kids that, uh, you know, are hungry and they're hungry to get back on track too. You know, I mean, they've been a, a lot of people aren't taking them as seriously after losing the Duke, after losing the FSU, but um, it's a good team. And uh, mm-hmm. Miami's got to, they got to come and bring their A game all game. And I don't care if it's home or not. It doesn't really matter. Miami hasn't exactly, uh, you know, lit it on fire at home over the last couple of years. So they got to gain that home field advantage back. It's going to be a good crowd. Um, and I hope Miami plays up to that, that, you know, but, uh, you're billion percent, right. You ball management is every, every, uh, about 1 billion percent in this game. I am going to get blues prediction for the game. I'll give you my own, but when we come back, I want to talk about the four-star edge that Miami just landed, Booker Pickett Jr. Blues watched him in person. I'm so excited to hear Larry Bluestein's take. You know what we like to say, especially on a Friday, we are only getting started on this episode of Locked on Canes. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Guys, there have been times in my life where I have needed and then benefited from therapy. When you're talking about time management, managing my family life with my professional life, do you ever feel like your brain is kind of getting in its own way? I benefited from therapy. I want you guys to as well. If you're thinking of starting, you want to give better health a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And then if you want to, you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege. We are also brought to you by the great folks at FanDuel. My football season has been an absolute blast so far. It will continue to be. And you can snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. Miami Hurricanes plus two and a half, by the way, two and a half point underdogs against Clemson. So check all that out at FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. Uh, We just had Locked On College Football kickoff live, so you can check out the replay on this and every single YouTube channel on the Locked On College Football Network, getting you ready for all the big games this Saturday. We're getting you ready here for Miami versus Clemson. It's why Larry Bluestein is with us. But, Blue, uh, before we get back into that, uh, I was texting you a little bit last night. uh, Very, very excited about four-star edge legacy player out of Wharton in Tampa, Booker Pickett Jr. verbally committed to the U last night. Hmm. I'm sure you've watched this player in person many times. What can you tell our audience about the newest Canes commit? No, to make myself older, I uh, watched his dad play. And then <laughs> when he got here to Miami, the Zephyr Hills High School, and, you know, that's, uh, you know, where DJ Pickett, uh, 2025 uh, safety goes now to, to Zephyr Hills. But, um, what you're getting here is you're getting somebody who's got 
a tremendous amount of knowledge of the game. Uh, he's played the out the linebacker position. He's and now as an edge rusher, he's long um, at about six three and a half, six four. Um, he's quick off the ball. Uh, he's always in the backfield. Plays for a really you know I mean a good team, not a great team in the area, but a very good team. You know that's kind of built. Um, what Miami's getting here is somebody, you know, who comes in and has an opportunity just like some of the other edge kids that they had over the last couple of years and be a factor. I mean, he's got a lot of growth in front of him. Um, you know, a lot of maturity still, uh, left to get, um, but I watch him to, you know, whether it be in a game, but I saw him up close and personal at a at one of the camps uh, in Gainesville during the summer and uh, talking to his dad on the sideline. And, you know, he just says, you know, he's what he's doing is he said he's learned, you know, he was smaller and he learned how to play the outside linebacker position. He learned how to play, you know, play, uh, play on the offensive side of the ball. So he said, unlike his dad, who is strictly a defensive player and strictly, uh, you know, a defensive tackle uh, that his son had an opportunity to learn a little bit more of, you know, and, and, and garner some experience at playing different positions. And he says, that's why I think he separates himself now from a lot of them. And uh, yeah, big get uh, all these, you know, and you know how the fans drive me nuts sometimes, but they're all, you know, chiming in to me last night. Oh man, he's, being recruited by Appalachian State and Bethune Cookman, and I said, "Come on!" He you had know big I mean? offers too, though. It's it's not huh? like he was he he had offers from uh, from yeah, big he had time bigger school, offers. Florida State, Ohio State. He had big but offers, but you know, but you know how somebody will see one thing and play on. It. Yeah. So they didn't see the FSU's and they didn't see some of the Florida's and Wisconsin's and Tennessee's. All they wanted to play on is, wow, Appalachian State, we're in it we're against Bethune Cookman. And I said, you know, <laughs> I, I don't dignify stuff like that because those are people who just fly off the handle at anything. And I think he's a great get. Yeah. Smart kid. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's building on a really, really good class and, uh, you know, I mean, and and I keep getting that, you know, all these things about, oh, Miami's not playing well. How are these kids going to stick? They're not judging it off of the the present. They're judging it off the future that they're going to be a part of. So I'll say that for the last time, that you got to quit uh, trying to pry these kids loose from a commitment that's going to be a life commitment. And right. they don't just want to be a part of the football team now, but they want to be a part of it 30 years from now where they could come back and, you know, and, and be proudful that they went to a school and walk away with a big time degree. So I don't dignify a lot of these negative things because they're always going to be negatives. No matter who you get, you get Tom Brady and they're still, Oh, he's this and he's that. So no, I think they got a good one. I think he's going to work out well. Uh, good job to, you know, and then obviously you got to figure learning from Jason Taylor isn't uh, yeah. going to be terrible. Yeah, no, no question about that. And listen, the uh, the recruiting class from an edge rusher standpoint, Great. they got a trio of four stars. I mean, fantastic players: Marquise Lightfoot, Elias Rudolph, and now right. you add Booker Pickett Jr. to that mix. And and it's funny because you were getting comments about his other offers. I'm getting comments from people who like are are not allowing themselves to be happy about landing four star players because our fan base only wants defensive tackles right now, Blue, because they've they've oh, missed well. out on a bunch of guys. <laughs> well. I mean, so yeah. so you look at that. Um, it, how, how badly does Miami need more tackles in this class? Because I also I, I'm not forgetting about the fact that they did get that transfer from Jameel Burroughs from Alabama. Sure. who's not playing this year, but he should be ready to play at a high level next year. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't make especially in this day and age. How can you make a, You know, how can you make uh, judgments on anything with the transfer portal? Because that thing could turn you around. Look at Miami's offensive yeah. front with Lee and Javion Cohen. It turns you around immensely real quick. So there's a lot of guys out there. I know a lot of people have been hounding me, too, about quarterback. And, you know, we're going to have to get a transfer portal quarterback because our kids aren't ready yeah. yet. And I can understand that. But I just, you know, obviously every great program whether it's uh, LSU or, you know, or Florida State or whatever. They have a multitude of guys that are on the, you know, uh, two and three. Like we, we when they got Jason, um, when they got Leonard Taylor, uh, 
and I said to you at the time, I said, that's a great pickup, but we need to get two and three Jason Taylors every cycle because of the fact that's what Alabama's getting. That's what yeah. Michigan and Ohio State are getting. And that's going to come. It really is going to come. I, I just, I think that this program and, and I can't reiterate enough and I'll say it, you know, right to the gentleman's face. Uh, Miami was handed the worst roster. And I told you that. Yeah. And they, when, when Mario Cristobal came aboard, he had such a, a project ahead of him because he had to not only build frontline starters, but he had to build depth, which he's doing now. And that's one of the reasons why you can't be, you know, you can't be critical all the time. You have to understand where, where you at, where you're at. And um, yeah, I mean, I, and I say that at, to every time I'm, I'm tired of the naysayers, you know, you got to give them growth. And my, I believe me, I know that Mario Cristobal is putting blinders on. He doesn't care. He just right. knows what his objective is. And, and his objective is to build this program into a, a national contender. And he's well on his way. And the objective this Saturday, try to get a dub against Clemson. Uh, I want to get Blue's prediction. I'll give you mine when we come back. You want to keep it locked right here. Larry Bluestein is with us on Locked on Canes. Not only do I have my Hawaiian shirt on today, I'm ready for the beach, but I've also got my bird dog shorts on. And guys, these shorts, they make my legs feel and look great. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh. They give your leg a truly sculpted look. Bird Dog shorts actually do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. I've tried them both, trust me. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fixed this by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but it stretches to give you a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs also uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. That's what got me through the summer down here in South Florida. Bird Dogs are functional for any occasion, guys. Go to birddogs.com slash college and use promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. How about that? That's birddogs.com slash college for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. If you're an everydayer and you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level, Join our Locked on Canes Insiders chat group. You know, we were talking about Booker Pickett yesterday, hours before he committed. We give you guys recruiting scoops, all sorts of breaking news updates, game and practice observations, one-on-one -on -one questions with me. You get text messages directly from my phone to yours. Try it free for 14 days. Click the link in the show description below. And then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there. All right, Blue, I have uh, I have gone on record at allhurricanes.com with a 24 to 20 pick in favor of the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, I do think home field advantage, even if we're not necessarily expecting a sellout crowd, having this game in South Florida, not at Death Valley, I think makes a big difference for this one. Uh, I think Miami can force Cade Klubnick into making more mistakes than he usually does. And also, Blue, something I look at with Clemson, they've had really problematic field goal kicking this year. So in a close game, you know, they've had a musical chairs of kickers and they've had guys come out of retirement to come kick for Clemson. Again, they're just four for 10 on field goal tries this year. I feel a lot better about Miami's kicking game than Clemson's in a close game. So I am going Miami 24 to 20. Who do you like and why? Well, I'm going to go basically the same thing as far as Miami winning the game, because I think that they're going to examine what they did wrong in the second half last week. I mean, they, they were in control on the road, you know, with a lead and uh, kind of gave that up. And I, I think Miami, it'll be a little bit higher scoring. I just think, I don't think that either defense is going to dominate. Mm. I think Miami wins the game 34 okay. 30. Um, and I have a feeling that we're going to see. Uh, yeah. I mean, and the great thing is no one even is mentioning, and I know he's uh, been a key is Xavier Restrepo. One of, the best, one of the leading receivers in the country. And I don't care if he goes to him every time. If he catches the ball, right. what's the difference? Mm -hmm. You know, so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that. And, and they, Blue, as I talked about this yesterday, Restrepo, it's not like he's averaging four yards a grab. He's averaging 12.2 yards per catch. He's averaging more than a first down every yeah, time he catches yeah. the ball. Well, and, and here's the thing. The slot coverage for Clemson is iffy. And if you look back at all the, the slot players that have gone against them this year, 
including when they moved Johnny Wilson in, in, into the slot from FSU, they got beat up pretty good. And, uh, and I, and I say this, you know, uh, you know, I know there's a couple of kids on Clemson from the South Florida area coming back. One of them, Troy Stilato, a wide receiver out of Cardinal Gibbons, who's gotten a lot of play this year. Um, so obviously it's a little bit of a homecoming for these kids too, but I think that, that there's going to be a good crowd, you know, on hand, there's going to be some, a lot of recruits coming out, you know, rightfully so, because they want to see both teams too. So yeah, I'm going to look, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I think Miami's going to come away with a W and, uh, you know, cause they don't want to keep putting, you know, the onus to, on every game because, you know, they still got FSU, still got a Louisville game. I still got NC state. And those are three, those are three. I mean, I figured this, I was looking at the thing. Miami will be underdogs in four of the next six games. Really? The only games yeah. that there'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, will be Virginia and, uh, will be uh, uh, Boston college. In well, Boston. You, you no, they'll be, they have them as a one and a half point underdogs wow. at, at NC state. I'm surprised. Yeah. Well, you never know. Cause you go on the road and a lot of things mm. change And True. Miami's notorious. If you remember the last trip that they made to, uh, NC State was like 38, 36. It was a very, you know, went down to the wire. So we'll see what happens. Let's take care of one one game at a time because if Miami wins this game, that puts them one one game away from bowl eligibility. And uh, obviously with the Boston College trip and the game at home against Virginia, Miami should wrap that up. And uh, we didn't foresee losing to Georgia Tech. North Carolina and A&M were the two teams that a lot of people thought early on that they would lose to. So, um, you know, they're still four and two and could have a, a banner season to win right out and, you know, even go up to FSU and give them a, a run because FSU has lapses too. You look back at the ser- at the game up in uh, Boston College, it could have easily lost that game. So anything can happen on any given day and we find that out. You know, you get a 29-point lead and uh, it's not safe anymore. And, uh, you know, we watched two 29-point leads this year, uh, Colorado uh, last week against Stanford and then earlier in the year, UCF at home had a 29-point lead on Baylor and lost. So anything can happen. Well, I've said it before, Larry Bluestein's radio show, the South Florida High School Sports Show, it's the most informative show you're going to find, uh, especially if you're a fan of high school football, college football, recruiting, and you want to keep up with everything. Larry Bluestein is always boots on the ground. Uh, when is the show coming up next week, Blue? I know you move around nights during hockey and basketball season. Do you know when the show is this coming yeah. week and what can people expect? Yeah, we're on Thursday, uh, 6 to 8, uh, right before uh, the uh, Zach, our friend Zach Kranz. Um, uh, you know, Thursday's a tough night because there's some high school football. But at the same time, what we're going to do is talk more college recruiting next week. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk, obviously, UM every week. We have a guest from UM on yourself. You've been on there a few times and Josh Darrow. And, you know, just getting a perspective from the University of Miami. So we'll have that. And uh, it'll be a good show. It'll kind of usher in some pretty good games uh, that were taking place uh, tonight. Uh, We'll be at the Columbus and uh, Miami New Orleans game, which is a GMAC game. It's, it's, it'll be an exciting game. A lot of recruits on both sides. Uh, Miami, obviously, uh, uh, with, uh, you know, with a couple of uh, commitments uh, from uh, Columbus over the last couple of years. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's going to be good. Thank you uh, for the plug because I think it's a, I think, I personally think it's a really informative show. And we have major guests on head football coach coaches from colleges around the country and uh, also a lot of the uh, the analysts, which I think, and you know, because you use a lot of them as well, because uh, they have an insight. You know, Chris yeah. Nee at Florida State um, is always on it. Corey Bender at Florida, they're always on top of those things. And then obviously the six, seven guys that we plug in with here um, in, in South Florida, including, like I said, yourself. Oh, that's great stuff. And make sure you follow Blue on X at Larry Bluestein. Follow uh, our show at Locked on Canes. And, yeah, make sure you check out Locked on College Football Kickoff Live in case you missed it. And we will talk to everybody again probably tomorrow. I mean, you know, who knows, man? We'll have another uh, another preview episode. We'll definitely talk after the game uh, on Saturday night, Sunday morning. Hopefully Miami can get it done against Clemson. So we'll talk next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.